Hey folks, Steve Vai here, and welcome to the Harmony Hut, where I'll be showing you some of the tools of my trade. Welcome. I seem to resonate more with guitars that have unique functions and totally unique sounds. A lot of them have different kind of maybe apparatuses on them or they're um, uh, modified in a particular way or they just offer something that's unique. This is an interesting guitar. It's one that Guild made for me probably in the 80s and it has 30 frets. And this is a very unique guitar. It's the Xavier guitar. It has 16 frets per octave. It'll drive uh, you, your harmony teacher crazy. <laughs> but this, I call it the Xavian scale. And uh, to, to play chords and whatnot on it and to solo, it, your ear is pulled in a completely different direction. It's another world. This color, you may be familiar, you may have heard of Vanta Black. It's so dark that it almost looks like it's invisible, like a hole. And we tried to get that paint to use in a production guitar, but there's such a heavy copyright on it and they, they won't allow it. So we did a lot of research to find the darkest black that we could get. This is an interesting little guitar that, you know, uh, has a unique feature. It's got a, the whammy bar is built into the body. This is a, a really quirky instrument. It looks just like a gem, but it actually has two whammy bars and the, the block is split down the middle so you can kind of, you know. Uh. You can do some interesting things with this. So it's a, a, a gem, but it's, it's unique. So this is, this is a, a gem, but it's not like any others. This was one that my tech Thomas built for me to tell you all of the aspects of this guitar, you'd need Thomas, but it's, it's got uh, a, uh, a pickup that then is processed and you can immediately have different tunings. You know, it's, it's uh, digitized, so to speak. And what you can do with this guitar in the way of tuning the neck instantly is unlike anything I've ever played. So there's, matter of fact, I just recorded a song with it because Another aspect of this guitar that is so cool is uh, this uh, trem system where you can actually bend notes and they stay in tune. That's a, a, a unique quality of a whammy bar. Most whammy bars can't do that because of the proportion that the strings loosen or tighten when you give them the wham. But I did this uh, one song I just recorded that has all these wild kind of chords moving and merging with the bar in tune. It doesn't sound like anything another guitar can do. I use this on a song called Upanishads on Modern Primitive. And this was built for me by Sterling Ball. And it's a seven string sitar guitar. It's got the, you know, the, the dampening thing that gives it that sitar sound but it also has these sympathetic strings that you can tune any way you like. We've got the old sitar, and uh, my, I first started playing uh, the sitar, not that one, but that exact same one, uh, when I was with Frank Zappa. He had one, and I started using it on recordings and then on tour, and he loaned it to me for many years, and then when I returned it, I knew I wanted to get one, so I got that, and that guitar appears on virtually every one of my records. I'm a Strat fan, I love Strats, but uh, they just don't fit my playing. They're, they're kind of difficult to play compared to the way I play. You know, I, I built the gem for kind of speed and ease and elegance. And Strats, you gotta fight, you know? But I love them because nothing sounds like a Strat. This is one of my other favorite sounding Strats. I think it's a 58. It's one of the few antique guitars that fits in here because it's offering something I'm picking up that uh, is, I hear is being really useful to me. This guitar here, this Strat 76, was my first guitar, uh, my first real guitar, you know? 
And uh, I use this all through high school, through college, through Frank Zappa. So when I started working with Frank, uh, I noticed that he had like no rules. You know, if he wanted to do something to modify a guitar or, or, or anything, he just did it. So when I was with Frank and I, I had this, I started experimenting by putting, you know, these uh, humbuckers in it and these preamps and all, all sorts of things, you know. The next move for me was a um, Charvel, a visit to Grover Jackson when I was with Alcatraz. Then I saw this guitar and it was a Sunburst Super Strat. He loaned me that guitar and I acquired it. <laughs> and that was the guitar that I used for Alcatraz and much of the recordings for Eat em and Smile. Because then that turned into the Green Meanie. Then I was getting ready for a tour and the Green Meanie was just not very consistent because I had done so much work on it. So I got with my techs and first I went to this little shop in Hollywood called Performance Guitar and had, they had some bodies and I, you know, reshaped the body a little bit and then um, started putting the various parameters into it that eventually made up the gem. And we made four of those guitars. So that really suited my needs. And that was sort of the amalgamation of, of Les Paul, Strat, but it had so many great things that I wanted that were not available at the time. And I, I didn't think much of it except that's what I like. And then when I got with Ibanez and they said, well, we think other people might like that. And uh, this Les Paul was relatively new. I was a big David Bowie fan and Mick Ronson. And Mick Ronson had uh, this beautiful Les Paul that had the front sanded off and it was natural wood. And I tried buying it because I wanted it, but it was way too expensive. It was in the $100,000 range for a guitar because it was his. But the guy that uh, has been assisting the estate makes these, so he actually made me one. And it's the, basically a replica of the Mick Ronson guitar. This is one of my uh, favorite new guitars. It is a JS, and my dear friend, Joe Satriani, took it on tour with him for two years, beat the hell out of it. Then he took it home and took a blowtorch to it, and then he painted it and gave it to me for my birthday. <laughs> and I had a, a cover put on it. It's a great sounding guitar, and it's, for me, it's one of my most cherished guitars. Absolutely, because it came from the man who taught me how to play. Ingve Malmsteen gave me this guitar. And Ingve plays, what he does to strats is unique. I mean, it's, the high string is like a gauge eight, the low string is like a 52. It's wildly scalloped, you know? To pick up one of his guitars and play them, it's a different world completely, you know? So, uh, but I have one. And occasionally it's nice for doing melodic minor scales. This is a, a new one to my collection. As you might have noticed by this guitar, I'm a Game of Thrones fan. But it's got incredible craftsmanship worked into it. And it's part of a series of three guitars that Fender made for promotion for the, uh, you know, the Game of Thrones. And uh, they, they usually, they don't break up the sets, but they did for me. For some reason, other guitar players might understand this. I just have created a, an identity for a couple of guitars that I have that I've been going to because they just feel like home. Evo, this is the guitar I've been playing for decades, and it's my go-to guitar. When I go to record, unless I need something specific that she doesn't deliver, this is the guitar. And the poor thing is beat to hell, you know, there's all these cracks and... Yeah, and everybody's telling me, don't take it on tour anymore. It, it's okay to leave it home. And I'm, I can't help it. If it's not there, it's kind of like, you know, somebody took the, the, the pacifier out of my mouth or something. <laughs> and the other one is Flo. This, this guitar, I probably play this guitar more than any other. 
and for many years now, because it has the sustainer. And more and more, I started incorporating the sustainer into my style and playing and songs. You create an identity for it. It's wire and wood, but you empower it with an identity. And then you love it, you know? And I love this guitar. What I have in my hand right now is a new signature guitar that I've released through Ibanez. It's called the Pia. And uh, it's sort of an evolution of the gem. Uh, the gem has been around for 35 years and has seen surprising success. And there's no plans to discontinue it. So it's sort of like more of a, uh, an evolution of the gem, in, but it's a new signature piece. I always felt at some point I wanted to experiment with something different. And uh, after about two and a half years of focused forensic study and fooling around with different designs um, and working uh, with the really good folks at Hoshino, Ibanez, we came up with this we call the pedal grip because it's kind of kind of shaped a bit like uh, flower petals, but it's also reminiscent of the yin and yang sign. I spent so much time just moving it a little bit here, a little bit there, you know, just positioning until it, it just felt like, oh, there it is, aha, you know. This is the Ultrazone guitar. And this was made for me by Alistair Hay out of Ireland. He's an incredible luthier, and he uses this, uh, I, I don't know what exactly it's called, but he was looking at a photo of my Ultrazone album, and on the cover I'm playing there's an illustration of me playing this alien instrument, and he had the nerve to create it. And it's uber cool. I mean, it's got all sorts of lights in it and stuff that uh, are just not on right now, but oddly enough, it really sits well on you, you know, when, you're, when it's hanging, and it also plays really well. And to keep in line with the bizarre concept of this guitar, I would come out in a space suit, basically. You know, with lights shooting out of my head and my fingers. The ham is cooking, brother. <laughs> Always cooking with me. I make no excuses. And then this, of course, is my uh, vanity guitar. <laughs> I had three of them. I have one left. Two of them were red. Uh, one of them is in the hard rock. Another one I, I um, raffled off for charity. Uh, but this is also another unique guitar. I mean, it's got uh, 12 string and two six strings. And what I would do is tune the 12 string and the, the lefty six string to a particular chord. Uh, because I, I'm not ambidextrous, you know, I, I don't really play like this. You gotta practice it, yeah. But there's this one guy, you know, most people know Michelangelo Batio. He's a freak. I mean, he is completely, it's astonishing. And I was kind of inspired to do that by watching him but I can't play like that, <laughs> you know? But I recorded a really, uh, I was using it for show, basically, the red one for a David Lee Roth video, and then I thought, I, I wanna make something musical out of this. So I wrote a song called Fever Dream, and it's really great, because I get to, you know, it's about as much as I can, you know, but it's cool because I'll hit a chord, and it'll pop out, and then I play over that chord, and then another one. So uh, I made use of it. <laughs> Because I get to work with a company like Ivan, as they're interested in making anything that I can dream up, so we get all sorts of weird things. Through the years, Hoshino Ibanez has made quite a quite a few different finishes and and whatnot on the guitar. But probably the one that was most surprising to me, the surprising thing about it was that the idea came from them, <laughs> and what that is is this uh, DNA guitar. Now this is a swirl, and the DNA, this isn't actually a, I have another DNA over there, but this was custom made for me because it's seven string, 26 frets. <laughs> so it's, it's quite a beast. 
But with the DNA guitars, they said, hey, why don't we take your blood and put it in the swirl so when people get a swirl, a DNA swirl, it'll have your blood in it. And I'm thinking, this is a, Jap a conservative Japanese company and they're making this suggestion. And I said, I like that. Why not? You know, what the heck? It's not a unique idea. Kiss did it with a comic book. And they went down and they put their blood in the ink. A few drops, I believe. This doesn't have, the, the vat that they use to make these guitars, I went to the hospital and they drew four vials of blood and they put it in this vat. All this, that's my blood. <laughs> and my, you know, my, my stock line is basically if, uh, if we ever get cloning together in the future, if they took this guitar and cloned another Steve Vai, maybe that guy can get his music on the radio. <laughs>